Hey 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 guys, not so fast. Before you watch the video, make sure to watch it with the right subtitles and choose the right settings. It would be cool if you leave me a sub to not miss content and don't forget to hit the notification bell. And now enjoy the new video. In this sense, I welcome you to a brand new video guys, counterpart of the Summer Elves, the Winter Elves. Hey guys, it's Ari here, let's jump right into the video and let me show you the way and explain to you the requirements to enter the Winter Elves. In order to access this place, you need to start the Dream Quartz quest by talking to the fairy NPC in Edron, you do not need fairiest access. But, what you do need is the Barbarian Test in Svargon and the Ice Islands quest up to Mission 2 to be able to travel with Buttle. Then follow the path shown in this video and jump inside the Ice Gate portal. Oh, by the way guys, don't forget, Buttle is thiefing Dwarven Rings. Thanks Alva for showing us the way to the spawn and the requirements. Guys, are you ready for the most important and interesting part of the video? Which is the hunting? So let's go! In this video today I prepared two ways of hunting, an easy way and a an harder way. For lower levels and solo players I recommend the easy way. If you are higher level or the respawn rate is slow or you are hunting in a duo I recommend you the harder way. What you are seeing now is the easy way of hunting this respawn. In average you will face around 6 to 8 monsters. As you saw I am starting the respawn really relaxed by first getting the monsters outside the castle. After that pull I'm slowly going inside the castle while pulling the monsters to the southeast. Make sure to finish them off with your Yui. If you are a Master Sorg, use the Fire Yui. If you are a Druid, use the Terra Yui. If you are having two or three monsters left, you can also start using Energy Waves or Terra Waves. Note that Winter Elves is one of the few monsters which is weak against three elements. Fire, Energy and Earth. After your southeast pull is that, jump to the west side, take the monsters from there and then go to the east side, take the monsters from there and run them around the stairs. By the way, you should also bring some sudden death runes for the big blue monsters. Now we are coming to the tricky part and the most risky part of this spawn. Make sure you are not luring too much out of the tunnels. When you jump down the stairs, you will face a lot of the big blue monsters and the dangerous Arachnophobia. Take care guys, they are hitting a hell. Make sure you are not running too deep inside the tunnels because that means you will just lure more spiders out. Now you are also gonna see why I told you to bring sudden death runes. These big monsters are always left after the pull. So far, so good. That was it already with minus one. Now go up again. Leave the castle to the north side and go clockwise to the east and then to the south. Here you can make another pull. If you killed this pull, go to the south and now you will see that you are there where you began. The respawn rate heavily depends on what server you play. On a dot server, you can see the respawn is not really quick. If the spawn is not fast enough, you can also extend your respawn by choosing the hard mode of this hunt. I will show this route later this video. Okay guys, that's it, I guess. Hey Lee, hey Lee, you didn't speak about the trip run, the influence and the supplies yet, should I go make it? Oh yeah, true. <laughs> How could I forget about that? Thanks for reminding me, little mascot. Alright guys, let's talk about the supplies. In this video, my character is level 250 and I was bringing 700 ultimates and like 400 chief bees. As well, 100 estes. If you are starting to spawn earlier, for example on 130, hmm, I would suggest you like 400 ultimates and 250 chief bees. Of course, if you are using a cup implement, you can also bring more supplies. Alright, let's talk about the equipment. In a nutshell, you have to bring ice protection and physical protection. But note that the ice protection is much more important. 
For example, you can simply go with a Glacier set if you don't have enough money, but you can also use an Ice Raiment like I did in the video. You can also go with a Dwarven Armor in the shoulder blades and imbue it with Ice Protection. Another option is to use a Bear Skin, but only if you are a Druid. But the absolute most important thing is to use the Glacier Amulets, which you can by the way loot from the Elves by itself. The Glacier Amulets give you around 20% Ice Protection. So all in all, it is very very easy to reach 40% Ice Protection. Just combine Magic Level, Ice Protection and Physical Protection and you will be fine. Alright guys, let's talk about the Imbuements. Like in every respawn you can use a Critical Imbuement. If you are using the Powerful Strike, your damage will go around 5% higher. You should definitely also use a double mana leech, it will make your hunts longer and easier. As I already said before, depends on what equipment you're using, you can also use a ice imbument. Last but not least, you can definitely also use a cup imbument. Okay guys, I will be back in around one minute and then we're gonna talk about the hard route. Alright guys, I'm back. So, let's talk about the harder route. It's great for duos or like for people who overkill the respawn. On the same time, it's also harder and more waste. You can pull some of the winter elves out of the castle and pull them out to the fields. Then you go inside and you lure everything to the southeast again. The route until now is pretty much the same, but the most important thing comes soon when we go down and up. So let's wait until we go down. Now the hardest path comes. As you remember before we also went down, but we didn't go inside the tunnels. Now you will go inside the tunnels. You will get a very big pool mixed out of spiders, winter elves and the big monsters. Since you are using classy amulets, the spiders and the big blue monsters will hit extra hard on you. Take care that you're not running out of mana, it's pretty hard. The next difference is to go up and then go up the east stairs. As you can see you don't have much space to run. On a druid I always use a terra wave here since you're hitting the monsters perfect. Make sure that you're not getting trapped because that means 90% death.
That's it pretty much with differences of route 1 and route 2. The possibilities are given. If you want, you can also go higher. Definitely do when you also hunt in a duo. Alright guys, so now you're gonna run clockwise again and you're gonna come to the entrance. Alright guys, I'm gonna see you in like 2 minutes. After that we're gonna have a quick look at the hunt analyzer and having a summary on the spawn. Alright guys, let's have a quick look at the hunt analyzer. Wow, we reached an XP of 3.5kk an hour at a gain rate of 150%. This is without brace and chance. This means there is much more room left for improvement. With every boost, bray and charm you could reach up to 7kk an hour. The loot is great and the waste is minimal. This spawn is definitely top tier, especially before the 250. Alright guys, thanks for watching the video, I really hope it helped a lot of people. What video would you like to see next? Make sure you leave a comment and subscribe to not miss new content about our favorite game TVR. Have a happy Halloween. See ya in the next video or on livestream, your TVR Lee and Aura.